welcome to Geek Freak. I am Frank, and today I'm joined by Jonathan. Hey, hey. And Kyle. Hey there. We have much to discuss today. We're going to start off with our question of the week. What 90s cartoon would make a gritty reboot? A good gritty reboot. Jonathan, let's start with you. I'm thinking, uh, so I don't know, there's a lot of good 90s shows, but I love the story of Samurai Jack. I think we can yeah. bring that back in kind of a, a little bit darker, edgier, because it was definitely geared for, for our age back then, but uh, you could do a darker version of that story would be pretty cool. That's a good idea. Yeah, when I first came up with this question, my first initial answers were all 2001 shows. Invader Zim, <laughs> Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, those are all from the oh, new millennium. Those would all be great, though. <laughs> <laughs> they would be. Man. Chalk Zone, that's another one I just thought of. Thought that about. was a but really good. It was an underrated show for sure. Underrated, yeah. But my in the end, it was Dexter's Lab. Because you oh, have, that'd like, be amazing. Warring scientists, kids, that have like this whole like science world that the parents are totally oblivious to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that, like, oh, there's a world underneath the world idea. And yeah, so you'd have Dexter out there just being like, and his crazy accent, of course. <laughs> totally at war with his like neighborhood kids. And that would just be fun to watch. Would you like to see that in in live action or animated? You know that yeah, that could almost be like anime style, really. Yeah, Um, because then you'd have just like you can go really crazy with the weaponry and whatever. Yeah, I think it'd be more fun to keep it animated, maybe change the animation style, but you know, going live action kind of puts you in a box sometimes too. Yeah, that's true. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah, uh, several answers to this question. Uh, I know we're already getting a Beast Wars movie, so that was my number one answer. Yeah, so uh, that's off the list. And then we also got news that the original X-Men 90s cartoon is being continued. So that's already another answer there. <laughs> so I'm going to go in a different direction and kind of go with the least popular show. Uh, there's one I watched called Biker Mice from Mars. Uh, it's an amazing <laughs> show. And uh, <laughs> Frank's mentioned that on this podcast before, I think. There you go. <laughs> nice. Good. Uh, yeah, I used to play a lot with the toys and watch yeah. the show. And they could really reboot that in like a sense of anarchy type yeah. of way. There you go. Nice. Run with it. It's hard to pitch. <laughs> Kids nowadays don't get it. They don't get how cool bikers from Mars that are mice. Right. It was awesome. It's okay. Just make it for the parents. <laughs> it's so either that shows. or Street Sharks. Street Sharks. Oh, they, oh boy. Talk about cool action figures, actually, because they had the big yes. shark heads. We were just talking about this with our dad last night, who was like, SpongeBob was stupid. He really likes, you know, he was talking about how he's trying to figure out what 90s cartoon that I really like. DuckTales was the one that he liked. DuckTales, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Our stories were so much better as kids, and I think we were talking about Bluey is kind of a show right now. If you're a parent, you know what Bluey is. Um, it's got good stories, but generally, I don't think the shows are as good anymore. Jonathan, you're a dad. Do you feel like that's accurate? Yeah, well, because there's so much content, and I think the people mm-hmm. who are making it know that, so they just dump out in volume, and so there's a lot of things that are just just garbage, just mindless colors flashing and stuff like that to try to get the kids' attention. But if you pay attention as a parent and you, you know, go through the options, you could find several shows that are really well written, good stories that, you know, in the end are actually teaching your kid a moral. And like Bluey, I love to sit there and watch it with my son while he's watching it. And he is super engaged with it. So yeah. it makes it easier for us if we're trying to, you know, clean or something like that to have a show that isn't brain garbage and uh, that he actually likes. I think we should do top five either worse or underrated 90s cartoons. Because now I'm thinking, you know, we got Biker Mice yes. and Mars. I'm thinking the Mighty Ducks. Remember that mm-hmm. Mighty Ducks cartoon that was like where they're actually like street heroes? Yeah. There's all kinds of good ones out there that were. That were good. One Gummy word, bears. Frank. Dark What's Gargoyles. Oh. oh, Gargoyles. Well, that's just. How did that one. not make the top of the list? <laughs> that's, well, that's not underrated. That is the Holy the, Grail of. Right. You know how many times the creator, uh, I think his name is Greg something. I have follow him on Twitter. How many times people just say, like, please reboot this damn thing already? <laughs> yeah, and it's time. Yeah. He's like, I'm trying, folks. I'm trying. I got need funding. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. You just got to crowdsource it. Yeah, we've actually sent, this has happened a long time ago on the podcast. We sent Disney our uh, casting suggestions for that. Reboot. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we have not received a response <laughs> back. I think it's because they're going to use our idea. Yeah. Um, all right. As for the network, we have a new round three coming out this week. We got a Trek Freaks with a very special guest, Susan who is joining Trek Freaks and going to be a part of a future podcast that we will announce later. We have a a Geek Freaks Classic coming out next week as we head to vacation. Uh, We also have some unfortunate news. E3 2022 is fully canceled, both digital and live events. So we will not be covering that event as it does not exist. We might replace it with something else like we've done in the past. We did Gathered Gamers a couple years ago. 
we might do something like that. I'm not too sure. Everything's so unsure right now. It's really hard. Um, but we'll go from there. All right. Also, we're gonna... speaking about the new podcast that's about to start, though, we haven't quite revealed yet. If you listen to our next episode of Trek Freaks, you will get a little bit of a preview of what to expect of that. That's what I was hoping for. I haven't edited it yet, but I was hoping you guys did <laughs> mention yeah. that. Yeah. Um, we'll probably, because I want to do the interview with them as well soon. So you guys will be finding out about it soon. They're just, they, they their episodes take a lot more work than some other podcasts that we do. <laughs> so it takes a while to get episodes out. So yeah, it's in the vein of Trek Freaks where you got to actually like write a lot of notes and stuff. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off our news with Kyle. Kyle, fill us in on uh, Coffee Talk. Yeah, so uh, sadly, tragically, really, we lost an amazing indie creator this week in gaming, and his name was Mohamed Fami. Mm -hmm. He was the creator and developer of Coffee Talk, which was a really popular game that was released on PC. I'm not sure if it's on consoles, but uh, it was just a really great visual novel that was entirely done in a team of like three to four people. And he was the creator and writer of the game. And he unfortunately passed away due to an asthma attack. And that kind of really struck a note with me because I have asthma as well. And yeah, I really wanted to play the game and just support him, which you can do, by the way. Uh, you can buy the game on Steam for $9 and all of the proceeds go directly to his family. That's so good. I urge you, please do that. They're going through a lot of hard times right now and could use all the support they can get. Do you know how long they're um, doing this event for him? Um, I don't know the time frame for how long the sale will be going on for, but uh, I imagine it's for a long while. Okay. We're going to have a link to it in our description, guys, so you guys could head over there. Um, if, you have an, if you're listening to this on your phone, the, the link will go to the Steam app, which you should have on your phone anyways, just letting you know that, so you get all the good deals. Um, and if you listen on your computer, it'll lead to the Steam uh, homepage on your computer. And yeah, nine bucks, you support our indie creator, and you get a pretty game. If you're not sure about playing the game, Kyle here just streamed it. So you guys go check out the <laughs> Geek Freak stream, and you can watch Kyle play it. And uh, that's probably how I will experience it, because I'm really bad about visual novels. <laughs> I'm always like, why do I got to make all the decisions? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that should be really good. So check that out, guys. Coffee Talk, and um, why not support somebody? More than just some no-name AAA title company which we'll be talking about at the end of this <laughs> podcast, by the way. Um, but yeah, that's a good way to do it. All right, let's move on to Moon Knight. We had the first episode of Moon Knight come out. Jonathan, can you give us your first reactions to this premiere episode? I, I really liked it. I hate, yeah. I don't, you know, obviously we're not going to give spoilers, um, but the vibe of it reminds me, and I, I said I hate because I was going to say, I hate that I keep bringing up the same movie over and over again, but it felt to me similar uh, to the Joker movie. That yeah. we just saw not too long ago, we talked about all the time, um, but that kind of darker vibes that that we're seeing in in movies now, it, it was very complex story, and I like that they don't just dump it all out there. You don't understand what's going on in the beginning. You're you're kind of peeling back layers as you go, but I mean it, the writing and everything. It's just like these new shows are a full on movie every episode, and I love it. So I'm excited to see more. Yeah, um, one thing that's very unique about this is what you're describing sounds like a DC film or DC show. This exactly. is a Marvel, and it's Marvel's well, attempt at a darker Marvel yeah, black label. <laughs> which makes me sad for DC, because when, when Disney's looking at you, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch out. And DC's yeah. been doing pretty good at holding their own in the you know serialized you know TV show market or whatever, and, and Disney's been focusing on doing some really awesome movies. Uh, but now Disney's working in on TV shows too, and it's going to be a hard battle for DC, I'm sure. I like the idea of like, watch out when Disney's looking at you. It's like <laughs> one day, you know, Star Wars is just hanging out and like, I think Disney owns us now. <laughs> it just happens out of nowhere because exactly. they were looking at you. I assume they're like the Borg. They'll just assimilate everybody in time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Run Star Trek. Um, <laughs> actually, all I wouldn't, all I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, that was such a new idea, and I, what I really like is I didn't do too much research into Moon Knight. I knew the basics, mm -hmm. the strokes. And one of the things that you know invited Isaac uh, to this role is the fact, Oscar Isaac, is that you're not actually part of the MCU. The, the character you're following is not the hero. Mm -hmm. They are a personality within the hero. You know what I'm saying? It's so interesting because you're, you're following Steven with a V, mm -hmm. and Mark, the other personality, is the hero of this whole story. 
So you're kind of uncovering this mystery. You know, because you clicked on Moon Knight, that he's going to eventually be this superhero-esque character. But you're still confused along with him. And it's kind of reminds me of like maybe a Cloverfield kind of thing where, mm -hmm. if you guys remember the, the, what is it called? It's not called Cloverfield, actually. The one where she's like locked in a basement by John Goodman. Oh, uh, oh. 24 Cloverfield Lane? That That's one. It. That movie is fantastic. It and is. And the whole time, you, you go through so many complex emotions where like, who am I rooting for? I actually kind of hope John Goodman's a good guy because he seems to be protective. All these things happen. And then reality shatters. When she finally gets out and you're like, oh shit, she's in a Cloverfield. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> go back in the bunker with John Goodman. He's safer. And that's what happens here. It's like, oh shit, there's so much more. You just woke up in the Alps somewhere and you know, you're having all kinds of problems. And, and, it, and you realize that like, not as it just a mental health disorder that he has, there's a legit God involved. And yeah, uh, and yeah so that devolves into like, just what is real to him. And mm. I, I'm interested to see if they really explore whether or not this is a delusion or reality and all that stuff like that. Do you think they're going to delve into that at all, Jonathan? I, I think so. I think they'll have to, you know, in time, that's kind of, I, I don't think they're going to open up questions and then not answer them. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I hope they don't kind of just sweep some of the stuff under the rug and just get into, okay, now he's a superhero, even though he has this psychological struggle that he's going through. Um, you know, he's got to kind of, answer those questions and try to resolve that psychological part. I, I feel like he will probably, uh, it looks like he's going to learn to work with his multiple personality disorder and kind of, uh, be able to control it and switch between characters or whatever. Um, but obviously there's gotta be some kind of, uh, trauma or something like that, that caused this, uh, split in his personality. So hopefully they explain this and, and kind of dig a little deeper into the mental health side of it. Instead yeah. of just turning it into a superhero and you know not not encouraging people who have mental health issues to seek help. Do you think? Okay, it reminds me of Split. Split also a really Such excellent a good movie, movie. Yeah. Right. Do you feel like this is exploiting that disorder, or is it a spotlight for it? So that's where it would it would determine how they continue. If they decide to just cool now he's a superhero, he can control this this you know mental health disorder he has, and you know, he's going to go save the day or be Batman pretty much that would be exploiting it. But if they can dig a little deeper and show, you know, the struggles that he has dealing with this and, and humanize that side of him and then show how he can cope with it and seek help for, for the challenges he's facing, then that would be supporting people who have it, I think, uh, or have similar mental health disorders. But I hope the, yeah, I hope they go that route instead of just trying to, make it fast and exciting for TV and then, you know, try to sell it and sell out the people who could use that support and help. I will say contradictory to split, which I'm not saying split did it wrong or right. I'm just saying split. You actually saw the one person go through personalities and this one, we're sticking with one personality mm -hmm. and his dip in and out of reality uh, and consciousness, I think is a really good way to show how jarring it is mm -hmm. to what you feel is yourself. And, when yourself is no longer in control of what happens the next day and mm -hmm. how that could affect your life. We already see it like a little bit with his love life, right? Yeah. He thought it was two days or he did those two days later. And so, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to be seen here so far. I have very high hopes. I'm already wanting to rank this in the top <laughs> one or two Marvel series. And it's only been one episode. That's how excited I am about this, but it gives me that Loki vibes that WandaVision vibes where I'm like, I have to figure out what's going on in this world. And uh, it's not like Winter Soldier. I was like, I get it. I mean, it's Falcon and he's got cool guns and wings. And that's where we're going to end with this. But no, it's, it's so much more. And I'm excited for this. Yeah. All right. Um, do you, do you want to give it a grade? Or do you think we should wait till the end of this whole series? Yeah, I would wait at least a few episodes. Okay. That's a, that's a fair call. Uh, it's totally worth the watch. Kyle, I suggest you watch it. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'll get on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of series and the people doing it right, we're going to go over to It is getting a prequel. Uh, the series is done through HBO Max. Uh, we don't know a lot about this prequel yet. We do know that it will explore the creation of Pennywise. I hope what they do is they kind of bring in a new generation of kids to fight him as well. So, Jonathan, what generation of kids would you want to see fighting Pennywise? We've already kind of got like the 80s kids and we've yeah. got the modern day kids idea. What do you think? What so I, I listened to a, uh, or I watched a video where somebody was explaining what they think it would be. 
uh, they're saying maybe back in the 60s, and it would be like Pennywise's, you know, first encounter, first uh, trying to merge with society or whatever. And yeah. he has a little bit less uh, control over his shape shifting. So he's a little, doesn't blend in as easy, but this would be like the first uh, encounter where another group of kids back in the like 50s or 60s is uh, trying to fight him. Uh, so I'm just hoping they don't rinse and repeat and do the same story with different, you know, colors, but actually rewrite the story. Obviously, he has to succeed at the end or at least go dormant like yeah. he did before. Um, so it'll be pretty cool to see how they do that. But I, th- I would like to see, like you're saying, is the creation of Pennywise, the character that this alien, you know, uh, uses. So maybe in the beginning, he doesn't take a form or takes a maybe just simple humanoid form or something like that and has to learn that, you know, first off, I got to get better at my shape shifting to try to blend in. And, oh, people like clowns. Kids like clowns. So that's how I'll be able to manipulate people is to, you know, look like I'm just a happy, friendly clown and then kind of poise with that to learn. But in the process, you know, fighting these kids or whatever and goes dormant for whatever, 27 years. And then when he comes back, you know, in the movie that we see, he's got it down, kind of mastered at that point. Yeah. The series is going to be called Welcome to Dairy. Is there any answers in the world, any questions in the it world you want answered, Kyle? Uh, I would just like to see more about how Pennywise was even brought into our universe. Like, I know there's a lot of cosmic origins with the character. Yeah, which is weird. In the book, it's really weird. (laughs) I haven't read the book. I know uh, my friend Robert has, who's (laughs) pushing buttons. Yeah, he loves the Stephen King books. But uh, he would probably be more of a resource on this than me. But, uh, you know, I'd like to learn more about the grand scheme of his character in the cosmic universe. Like, what is his purpose? Like, why is he even present in our plane of existence? The book is troubling with the ending and there's like a, it's the cosmic turtle gets involved. And then there's, that's what I've heard. Yeah. So it's a little, <laughs> a little odd myself. I want this to take place in like the forties or thirties or twenties even and have that old creepy carnival style going on where it's like, doo, 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 you know, And Mm -hmm. then, yeah, you have this weird creature trying to find a form and he sees this clown. Sure, that's the bait. But then let's delve into the origin of the balloons. What's the deal with everybody floating? What does that mean? There's so many little things that, like, let's get into what that means, you know? And you could do this. I I always try to avoid the Great Depression and World War II because they're so big of a concept to mess with. But if you were to put this during the Great Depression, that would probably be a pretty cool time, a pretty cool, like, perspective to put on it because he's a clown and there's a lot of, you know, the circuses were going around and homeless were trying to join and it was just a crazy time. And you could probably use a lot of that in the story. Yeah. And, and, and again, like uh, with, with it being wartime in the 40s, you know, if you had that, that period where we're switching over, floating could tie into with that where like maybe it was, uh, I don't know, a kid who saw some sort of newsreel from a thing of, of, you know, soldiers dying or whatever at the invasion on uh, Normandy Beach and he, and he sees the bodies floating and then that's like, all float, you know, it's something like that. Uh, it could be something really wild like that. And then you got to think of the color palette of that era being um, either the like sepia tone, I think it's called, like where it's browns and grays and tans, or the starting to turn into real bright colors in the 50s where you had like red cars and really cool, like with the red balloons. You could really have a lot of fun with this thing and, and the music's unique and stuff like that. So. It kind of depends on the version of it we're going to get to. I was assuming they're going to go with the modern day it and not the 90s, 80s it that, I, that we grew up on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an older clown too. So it'll be interesting I to think, see where they go with this. Yeah. If Bill Skarsgård is still attached, then yeah, I'm all for it. 100%. I think he will be. It's HBO Max and they have been just putting cash out on things. It's been really good. Have you guys seen Our Flag Means Death yet? It's the um, pirate series they put out. It surprised me what that became. So... <clears throat> Uh, just a quick rundown on this series. Um, first off, it's done by Taika Waititi, so I was going to watch it either way because I love how he does uh, What We Do in the Shadows. It's one of my favorite shows. And it's uh, it's the true life story of uh, Steed Bonnet, who, if you guys don't know, he's one of my favorite saps in history. He's this rich dude who's like, I really want to be a pirate. It just sounds neat. And he got bored with his wife and kids, so he ditches them. He's super rich. He just, when everybody else like gets a pirate ship by taking one, he buys a big ship, he hires crew to be pirates on it, and they all have, like, health plans. <laughs> this was Steve Bonnet. This is a real person. He's out in the Caribbean seas. He runs into Blackbeard, the actual Blackbeard, Edward Teach, 
and uh teach just became best friends with them they became good friends and so you got blackbeard the most feared pirate and then you got who in the show they call i think that might have been his real nickname but in the show they call him the gentleman pirate who in real life built a library in his pirate ship <laughs> this, this is a real person um anyway so the show really actually shows like a love story developed between steed and and uh, ed teach and it's this really cool thing where it's like opposites attract and then what does that mean and them trying to figure it out. It was such a delight. That show, you have to get past the first three without Blackbeard. For some reason, they took three episodes to get to him. He's a big part of Steed's life. But then, man, it was just such a fun romp. And what a hell of a cast. Got Hodor in it and stuff like that from Game of Thrones. It just off sidetrack, guys. Check that out. That was a, that was a surprise hit for me. It was really good. All right, some bad news now that <laughs> we got off of that. Ezra Miller, Flash, uh, he's arrested for misconduct in a Hawaii bar. Uh, basically, what happened is a quick rundown. Woman's singing karaoke. He like takes the mic from her and is, is belligerent. And then he attacks a 32-year-old man who's playing uh, darts. This is not the first incident for Ezra. We saw in Europe where he attacked a woman, a fan of his, outside of a bar who was kind of mocking him. I'm having a hard time with Ezra still being Flash. Kyle, what do you think about all this? I'm surprised he's still employed. Yeah. Actually, because this hasn't happened not once, but twice. And it's like, wow, uh, how is he still getting away with it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, you can make a joke like he's been flashing away from the. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, we're keeping that dad joke in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Flash is a superhero, right? You're supposed to be looked up to by the kids. You can't be looked up with you're in the newspapers for this kind of stuff. John, what should DC do? Yeah, they, they should have fired him. I mean, I get giving someone a second chance the first time something like this happened or whatever, but obviously it's happened again. Lord knows how many times he's gone out and gotten belligerent and done stupid stuff that we don't hear about in the paper. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you're saying, you're a role model to so many kids, no matter you know what superhero you are, if you're in a current hot movie or something like that, when, you know, when kids see you, that's what they're, they're expecting is for you to be noble and respectable and, and somebody they can follow. And then you see these kind of reports and it's just, it's devastating. Um, and we don't want kids to think that this is okay. Go, you know, yeah, you could be a celebrity and you make a ton of money and you're a really cool character and then go get, you know, blackout drunk and start fights. No, that's not cool. That's not what we want people to, to do. So he's got to be replaced. I would be fine if they actually write it into like the next movie where he's dies off or whatever is replaced by another flash or if they just want to do a cold cut and he's he's out and a new guy's in and they just look different like that's not a big deal but uh yeah they they should replace him they should have told him in the the last time around that he had an incident like this that hey if anything even remotely close to this happens again you're just blacklisted we're never going to work with you again uh because it it really is damning for dc's reputation as well um, so if they didn't do that, that's their fault. But still, they need to take care of it now. Yeah, I, I personally want Grant Gunston, who plays Flash on the TV series, to be the new main Flash. Uh, they actually did a cameo uh, on the TV series where Ezra Miller popped up when they're doing like multiverse stuff. So there's definitely a connection there. It's in the same multiverse. Yeah, this just can't happen anymore. And what I find very interesting, the first time this happened, we actually we wrote an article about it. We talked about it on the podcast. Everything. It was so quiet nobody talked about this concerningly quiet and now we have this one the article i'm referencing is from like hawaii channel 5 it's a local article (laughs) it's not being pushed nationally why is that the case kyle do you think maybe the wb owned by at&t has something to do with kind of keeping this quiet oh 100 yeah you know they always want to try and control the narrative they don't want people to get uh you know a negative view of them as a company. So they're going to do everything in their power to control what people think. And yeah, media is just one way of doing it. Yeah. It really feels a little shady in my opinion, where like normally we would hear about this tenfold, you know, it'd be, Oh, it's on, it's on CNN. It's on all these different things. And not like I'm necessarily calling out any particular station. I am just saying that I had to actually look on local papers for this thing where it's like, this guy's going to be in a freaking flash movie. It's one of the big movies that's coming out next year. Now it got delayed. In 2023, it'll probably get delayed again. Who are we, who are we kidding? Um, and it just kind of feels like, I don't know, This if this was Jason Momoa or something like that, 
it feels like it should be that level and yet it's just not and so i'm interested in why we continue to not hear about this kind of stuff it'll pop up it'll bleep but then it's done and then all you see are the echoes of people saying we must get rid of ezra miller and then eventually even they are quieted off because nobody responds to them do you it's think it's like because he's a lesser known actor though like you're saying J- jason momoa or like the rock or something if anything even remotely interesting happens with them it's all over media because people want to get clicks but maybe the name Ezra Miller just doesn't get the attention that, that you know, we think it does. That could be the case. Yeah, he's not as well known. It's, it's well, a shame because in, uh, the character is, you know. Yeah. He's in the Fantastic Beasts series, too. And that's also owned by Warner Brothers, right? It is. So, yeah, yeah. you're right. And that could be another reason why it stopped making headlines. The latest, I looked at it, the latest trailer for Fantastic Beasts, which we were just talking about, actually looks really good for a, show that, for a movie I didn't intend on watching. He's in it for like a millisecond. They're not advertising him in that movie very much. So it's mm. almost like they're playing it smart. Like, let's keep him quiet and stuff like that. Um, it's just concerning. I don't know. It's, it's something to it's keep just, on. You know, it's really fascinating, actually, because I remember what Johnny Depp went through. Yeah. And they completely outright replaced him for Fantastic Beast 3 with, uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen. Mads, yeah. Yeah. And that was like such a jarring change. But I'm sure he'll knock it out of the park like he always oh, does. Mads is awesome, yeah. But why isn't Ezra getting the same kind of attention? Yeah. It, yeah, it's weird. Well, that whole thing, yeah, with Amber Heard, which we found, well, not all things are black and white. You know, Amber Heard was definitely a fault in her own way, too, uh, which has been proven. And so now it's like, yeah, I don't know. We don't need to go into that one, too, but you know, that could open a whole new can of worms. Um, I just find it very disheartening to see that, like, this is going to get brushed under the rug. He's going to have this movie come out. DC's for sure going to talk about him then. And meanwhile, if there's kids out there getting those flash action figures, it's like, don't look them up online, kids. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just yeah. a shame. All right, let's move on to some other uh, real heroes in the industry. Uh, Blizzard, Activision Blizzard. Uh, <laughs> we have two big things coming up with them, okay? So first off, let's start with Overwatch League is about to start in about six weeks, five weeks. And they cannot find sponsors for this damn thing anymore. And I'm a huge Overwatch League fan. I watch them. San Francisco Shock's amazing. I like uh, London Spitfires as well. But they just can't get anybody to follow into this. Washington Post is saying that companies are not wanting to go. It used to be like Coca-Cola and all them. They stopped their things back in 2021 because of the sexual harassment lawsuit. Do you think think the league will continue going? Or are they going to end up closing the league off, pal? It's really hard to say. I think... The biggest detriment to this is obviously Overwatch 2 hasn't been out yet. Yeah. Like that's clearly why that's not being successful and finding sponsors. Because aside from you, Frank, I'm not too sure who else watches Overwatch League. Yeah. So I don't know what numbers they're pumping out, but that has to affect all of these major sponsors' decisions to not follow through. And clearly, if there's a sequel out with Overwatch 2. Yeah, the people will be interested. The hype will be there, and that's what will draw the sponsors back. That's the easily the biggest reason why. Yeah, yeah. There's also a level of like, okay, with the pending lawsuit or the lawsuit that's ongoing and stuff like that. Do they are they kind of like just okay with not getting sponsors right now and then waiting? Yeah, you're right. With Overwatch two, we'll get a couple new sponsors. We're going to basically relaunch the league and be good again. It's all kinds of questions. What do you see of the situation, John? Um. Uh- yeah, the, it's it's rough. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, their reputation is not great right now, so getting sponsors is, is going to be hard. But as you're talking about this, I'm thinking, you know, there's other companies that got a rough reputation right now that are trying to rebuild and maybe partnering together would help. It makes me think of uh, Facebook slash Meta, who yeah. is kind of trying to rebrand and really trying to expand into this other, you know, platform or whatever. Um, it seems like they would be a good one to sponsor uh, Overwatch because. They have a aging demographic in Facebook. They want to bring back the young crowd that all moved over to TikTok. And so maybe having some esports in their wheelhouse or being able to promote esports through their platform or something like that uh, might help them reconnect with the younger generation. And you know, maybe they'll be able to buy like exclusive rights for Overwatch characters in the metaverse once they, you know, get their their stuff worked out or whatever. Um, so I don't know. It seems like that would be a good match because obviously both of them got a rough reputation. Reputation, uh, but I don't know. That that'd be yeah. may, maybe 
maybe washing a dirty hand with a dirty hand doesn't get either of them clean. But <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good saying. Can I get that on a shirt? That's a good one. Yeah, like that. I'll print one for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, well, and there's also the case like Facebook at one point was pushing Facebook gaming. Like they, mm-hmm. they themselves are trying to get into the gaming world a little more. So this is a really good way to do that. And you can get in with a contract into Blizzard, into Overwatch before the sequel comes out. And also those contracts are more expensive. Um, it is tough. There's a lot of very hardworking people in the Overwatch League. And I think by design, it's actually a better conference than most of them. Like, Call of Duty uses a lot of it too, understandably the same company. But it's it's better designed than say like some of these fighting games or whatever they're talking about on round three, where it's just tournament and tournament and tournament. This is actually setting up like, hey, here's a team you could root for, which I think is so important for esports to meet with physical sports in that way. Um, it's just man, this this league has been marred by a company that has made so many mistakes, um, and it's tough. What do you think? What do you think is the future of Activision Blizzard? Because we're seeing. I mean, like, uh, you know, World of Warcraft subscriptions have gone down over, you know, the past five years, right? I know the pandemic, I think, helped for a little bit, but yeah, then all their lawsuits and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, we're seeing Overwatch. Overwatch 2 hasn't come out. Overwatch 1 players are, are dwindling. They're and tired. And this. So what else do they have that's really a big staple for, you know, income? And how are they going to, like, rebuild after all this? Hey, they still got Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's still chucking along. Good game. Um, yeah, it, I almost think they're kind of letting things get delayed a little bit because they're like, look, let's let the Microsoft thing happen. We're going to talk about that in a second, too. Um, and try to rebrand ourselves. Not rebrand ourselves, refresh ourselves. Because, un- unfortunately, every one of these big AAA titles, as Kevin will tell you, <laughs> uh, their sins are forgotten eventually. And I think that, oh, I think Activision Blizzard knows that that's a thing that happens. EA, for example. Um, and so they're just trying to run the clock out while some people like the senators that we're going to talk about here in a second are trying to make sure like, whoa, 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 we can't let that clock run out. We have to solve problems first. And, um, and so we're going to see what happens, but I don't know. Yeah. They're going to be announcing a new expansion for a while. They've delayed Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 through the moon. So it might be that like, Hey, in 2023 is going to be the year of Blizzard and all these things are going to come out and people are going to forget about the allegations before it not even allegations i mean some of this has been proven already so it'll be interesting and then i i, I'll, I think i brought it up before but yeah i was talking to um world of warcraft players because i recently returned to see how things are going and they talk about the the cosby exit is what they call it which was you know from the cosby suite and stuff like that how there was in the game a mass a mass exodus um which from the outside i was like i hope it's happening but i don't know because i already exited <laughs> so I, I couldn't see it happen in, in real time and sure enough, guilds fell apart because of that. And I think when you lose World of Warcraft players, a tent pull, I mean, it is the biggest tent pull for Blizzard itself, but it's one of the two biggest for Activision Blizzard. And um, when you have a mass exodus like that, I think they felt it. And I hope that that's something that taught them a lesson. Uh, but yeah, so we have four U.S. senators. Uh, they are petitioning the FTC chairwoman, uh, Lena Khan, to slow or pause the deal between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard so that the employees can uh, finish up their sexual harassment allegations. So uh, one of the big things happening is 1,800 Activision Blizzard employees have asked for the resignation of Bobby Kotick. But because of the deal, he's, he's softly guaranteed to be there until 2023 when the deal finishes. So it's like, well, we can't remove him if he's part of the Microsoft deal, and therefore they're not listening to the employees. Jalen, should they stop this thing? Should they slow it down? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I would I would stop it. If there's, if there's a lawsuit underway, I would say, you know, I, I don't know enough about how all this works, but something along the lines of this business, this entity cannot change their status uh, oh, yeah. during the course of a lawsuit until it's been settled. So they can't be merged, they can't be bought, and they can't hand over employees from one one to another and then, you know, hide them in their own branch of their company. Uh, yeah, so I'd say like, hey, you guys, we either shut your doors and you're shut down and done until we solve this, or you can't be making big deals like this and selling your company mid, you know, uh, investigation. Yeah, it almost should be part of the investigation. Is like, okay, everything status pauses right yeah. now until investigation is done and we can solve this. Otherwise, they get dispersed amongst the other. Bobby Kotick can move to another company, or all these different executives can move to other companies, and all of a sudden you're poisoning the well at Rare mm-hmm. or at, you know, whatever, Devolver Digital or something like that. And then it's like, well, instead of removing from the industry, you just spread it. And it's, yeah. you know. What do you think, Kyle? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, personally, as a Blizzard fan, I really, really want this to go through. Yeah. But more so for the fact that it'll give them a fresh slate and hopefully get rid of all the cancers that are currently in Activision Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Bobby Kotick, presumably number one. Yeah. And, you know, as a more so an objective point of view, like, yeah, obviously they have to take all the necessary steps to ensure that not just the employees, but also those in corporate level are held accountable for everything that they've done in the past 10, 20, 25 years that they've been active. Yeah. It, again, I, I too also want that fresh start. And, and I, from the rumors that we're getting from the, we're going to talk about that at the end of April, guys, April 19th, I think it is. They're going to reveal what the next expansion is. We'll have a whole thing on that. But it feels like when we're hearing, it's going to be a time jump and we're returning to Azeroth, you know, whatever, 20 years in the future. And um, it's going to be like a refresh. They're going to do Cataclysm 2, for those of you who know what that means. Um, and so that'll be exciting and stuff like that. But everything is marred right now. You can't do that until you clean this slate. You can't start a new slate until you clean this one, you know. And so um, we'll see how it goes. But I think we, the important thing is we keep them accountable right now. All right, let's end this off with some suggestions. Jonathan. What are you watching? What are you playing that you suggest other people pick up? Oh, gosh. I haven't been playing anything. I've barely even turned on my computer in like a couple of weeks. Um, I've been watching uh, Ozarks. I've been trying to finish that. I've been watching Picard. My God, it is so good. I if know, you guys have I not watch watched that. it, there's a new episode that came out this week I haven't watched yet, but the ones that I did were amazing. Um, what else? I've been watching older episodes of Star Trek as well. Um, but I, I think that's it. I'm, I've been watching a few different things, but uh, and Moon Knight, but um, yeah, mostly. Oh, and Survivor. Now that now that I've been listening to the Outlast Ooh. podcast. Hey, hey nice. Go, yeah, go watch yeah. Survivor, guys, and check out the Outlast podcast, part of the Geek Freaks Network. Yeah, <laughs> I I watched that for you know 15 years or something like that, and then you know the last five or six seasons I haven't watched it, and was like, what am I doing? Got to get back into it. It's just hard to <laughs> hard to find the time. But now I'm. On my lunch breaks, I don't conversate with anybody anymore. I just prop up my phone, put on something that I can stream, and watch 30 minutes of entertainment. Yeah, that'd be a good topic for another time. <laughs> Keep freestyle. Um, <laughs> or we talk about the isolation of a connected world like that. You know, that'd be interesting. Um, yeah. The shame is that you miss Rick Devitt. That's the shame. That of the five years that you're gone, you miss one of the best players. True. And we talked about that last night. But yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Kyle? What do you, what do you suggest for everybody? Well, actually, I wanted to also bring up the Breath of the Wild sequel being delayed oh, to point. 2023. Yep. So recommendation, play the first one. Amazing game. I highly recommend it. But uh, yeah, uh, aside from that, um, I've been reading my first ever graphic novel. Oh, cool. And uh, Batman Year One. Yes. I got the deluxe collection with all three of the properties that inspired Matt Reeves. Such a good purchase. I think I held it upside down. There we go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I've been enjoying your one so far. It's really cool to see how he took that material and adapted it yeah. to the big screen. So it's really, ra uh, so far it's been a rad read. The Catwoman from that one, I think is a really, is really pulled up. Zoe Kravitz, I think is inspired by your one Batman for sure. Kind of this, you know, badass basically. Um, yeah, Our Flag Means Death for me on HBO. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, Steed Bonnet and Blackbeard. Uh, become best friends and possible love interests. So it's, it was very interesting. A lot of fun. Um, I was rooting for it the whole time. It is super silly, but if you know, like Taika Waititi's other work, like what we do in the shadows, you're going to be familiar with how they, he handles silly stuff. And it's just fun to watch. Um, and gaming wise, I've been kind of popping around, but that Kirby forgotten lands has been a really good return to classic platformers. That feels like playing Mario 64 and I love it. So um, go check that out as well. It's, you know, never going to go down in price. You might as well buy it now. It's never going to go down in price. It's how Nintendo is. All right. Lastly, May 8th, we're going to be recording live at the Lodi Comic Con. So go hang out with us, guys. If you're in the Northern California area, Lodi Comic Con, I think it's 10 bucks a ticket. It's so cheap. Um, <laughs> come on by. We're going to have games. I think we're going to be, I think this time we're going to be ranking MCU movies, Jonathan. I haven't told you mm -hmm. that yet. But <laughs> we're going to be ranking MCU. We did the controls last time. We're going to do MCU movies this time. And we're going to do live recordings. We're going to have special guests. I think we're going to try to get a couple of the round three guys down uh, to talk about some fighting games. It should be a blast. So go check us out. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.